Hello everyone and welcome to KDH Art Class. So we did a color wheel last time and we learned how to take the three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, and we learned to mix two of them together, like the R plus the Y, hmm, R, red, plus Y, yellow, red and yellow equals orange, or the Y plus B. The Y for yellow, B for blue, the yellow and blue making green, and of course the R and B, the red and the blue making purple. So again, red and yellow made the orange, yellow and blue made the green, and the blue and the red made the purple. So these are called secondary colors because it takes two of these to make one of these. So they're in like second place. So you have primary and secondary. Second is two. It takes two of these to make one of those. All right. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do some continuation of our lines, space, and now we're going to start adding colors. So what more fun way of doing it than with hot air balloons? We're going to be using different lines. We're going to show space by having large looking closer, medium a little further away, and small being super small. And of course adding the clouds to give a little bit more depth on our space. And then do things like primary colors on one, secondary colors on the other. And then we can talk about other things like analogous colors or complementary colors or something like that on your third one. But the most important, our largest, being our primary colors, again, red, blue, and yellow. All right, what do we need? We need, well, we need basically the six colors, or by now you know, you can take the three colors and create the six by mixing them. So you only need three colors, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the six different colors something to draw with, and of course, something to draw on our piece of paper. So, let's organize my chaotic desk here and zoom in a little bit so that we can draw our hot air balloons. Go ahead and grab your pencil or whatever you're gonna draw with. I'm gonna go ahead and use the marker because as you always hear me say, my camera does not like the pencil as much as the marker, so I'm going to use the marker. Let's hope I don't make any mistakes. If I do, I get to find a creative way of making it work. All right, let's begin. So we need to make our hot air balloon. So what I like to do is start with my curve. Then I'm going to try and match it on the other side. I'm a little lopsided, but maybe the wind is blowing in that direction. Then instead of closing it, I'm going to drop it down just a little bit lower. Let's go ahead and give a little bit of a curve here, or you could even do, ooh, we could do it like the opening we can see inside the hot air balloon. So, more like an oval look to it. Okay. Right. With that, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a curve, almost the same width as the bottom of our balloon. Go ahead and bring it down, two little lines on the side, and of course connect it in between. Now if you want to show your 3D here, you can go ahead and add a little bit of a curve there. So now you can see in the basket and you can see up in the balloon, and we're just going to go ahead and connect it.
with our wires. You can add as many wires as you like. All right, so now it's up to you to do the design of the balloon. So I have focused on my intermediate artist, especially starting like third grade, second grade even, cross contour lines. So we're going to follow this shape right here, this curve shape. And I'm going to follow it. follow it until it connects at the bottom. Then you also have to follow this shape over here. So now we're going to follow this shape and follow it to the bottom. Right. And I think I can squeeze in two more. So I'm going to curve following this shape over here on this side to the bottom and one last time from the middle if you can fit it in there follow that curve and then bring it down so what you're doing is you're starting to create more of that three dimension look to it again this is the inside of the balloon so it's actually going to be a nice little shadow you know and the same with my basket you know that can also be a little shadow just to show some three dimension okay all right now let's think back to all of those lovely lines that we had done in the first uh, nine weeks and you had any anywhere from come on marker hang in there broken lines yeah. you had zigzag lines we had curved lines yeah. and i just want you to go ahead and start decorating what your balloon is going to look like and i tell you mine is really going off in that sideways direction there all right, I'm going to embrace it and just keep going. Again, change it up however you want. Maybe I'll do a couple of these. Do a couple more of the curved ones. a nice little broken line maybe two broken lines I can even do a little bit of a zigzag in here if I want whatever you want to decorate your balloon you can even decorate your little basket and if you didn't want to color it in you wanted to draw somebody in there you are more than welcome to do that I think I'm just going to show Just a little bit of a little 3D effect on the sides. All right, so of our three balloons, this is the closest one. We need one that's a medium size. So I'm going to look at my paper. Where would my medium size kind of fit? And I kind of was a hog on this. I really filled it in. So I'm thinking I might do a medium one, just almost like it's going to fall off the page over here following the same steps I'm gonna go ahead and do my curves remember this is a medium sized one mm -hmm. connect it go ahead and make your little basket hanging underneath it Connect it with your wires. Add your cross contour lines. Now, being intermediate artists, 
now that I've explained how to do it once, I expect you to be able to keep up with me more easily on the second one. So there's a medium, and then I can do a smaller one. I kind of like how this diagonal is going composition-wise. So I think I'll do a nice little smaller one way off in the distance over here. Making my cross contour lines even closer together. And there we go. So we are now showing that we need to understand our lines, space, large meaning closer, medium further away, smaller, as I knock everything around on my table. I'm so excited. And then, of course, let's add some clouds just to kind of fill in. You know, some of the space around there. Clouds can go behind some of the balloons. Maybe just almost reaching it. Oh, I want it to kind of go behind that one. Got a nice little empty spot here. You know, just anything to kind of help fill in that negative space, the background space that is not involving our balloons. We did forget to add some of our uh, fun little lines. Maybe we could do little curvy ones. And there's nothing stopping you from doing, you know, cute little pictures. But I can't help myself from being an art teacher and going, oh, let's reinforce what we learned before. And maybe I'll do curvy is going upwards on this one. Why not? How fun. Right, and well, it looks like I got enough room for one more of those in there. And you can also add some little details on that one. Of course, how fun. Way up in the sky. Maybe there's a few little birds here or there. <laughs> All right. So in this case, let's focus on doing our main balloon with the primary colors. We know that that is red, yellow, and blue. So my challenge to you is how can you color your balloon with just red, yellow, and blue? White and black don't count. And the basket, if you want to just do the basket brown like I did here, you're more than welcome to or you can also continue that with your primary colors. I leave that as your choice. Okay. So have fun figuring out how you can put the red, the yellow, and blue without coloring the whole thing. Scribble, scrabble, no, no, no. Okay. Stop when you get to a line. Even if it's going to stay the same color, you still want to stop because our eyes see sloppiness that goes over lines. So we don't want that to happen. So sticking with your red, yellow, and blue. In fact, to go a little bit faster, I think I'm going to stick with something that covers the paper more quickly. And go with my red, yellow, and blue crayons. I like it to look like they are stripes going all the way across. You can choose to do it any way you want, but only use the red, 
the yellow, and the blue. Those are your primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. If you watched my other one, you know I was teasing you guys with a red, a yellow, and blue the entire time. So let me go ahead and get these out. Stay in your little areas each time. Well, it would be fun to kind of do that. It's about to alternate, but then it's going to change. Tell I'm concentrating here. I am coloring rather quickly. Please do not confuse coloring fast with scribble scrabble. There is a huge difference. So allow me to show you with a nice dark color. Scribble scrabble. You can see the white paper in between. Coloring fast. You're doing a solid color quickly and this takes practice guys to be able to color quickly versus scribbling don't leave the little spaces coloring quickly usually means going in one direction the back and forth is side to side not changing it up and changing it up and changing it up and changing it up and changing it, up. it starts to look like scribble scrabble make it one direction, don't let any of that white paper go in between, or don't let any of that white paper show in between, and you have now colored quickly, but it is truly coloring, it is not scribble scrabble. So if you were not aware, and I can see that's actually my indigo color, so let me switch it to my blue. Uh, there we go, that's my blue. Coloring quickly, not scribble scrabble, don't let any of that white paper and even I have to slow down when I get into those little bitty corners, so make sure you are slowing down as well, nice and slow bigger areas you can go faster because you don't have to worry about falling out of the lines slow down when you get to the corners so i hope that explains the difference when you, you see your teacher coloring quickly or someone else coloring quickly and the teacher is going like you're scribbling it's because they can see the white paper and you're getting outside of your lines when you're supposed to stay in your lines. There is such a thing as scribble art. There's a wonderful way that you could do almost like scribble to be your background. Scribbling's not necessarily bad. It's just doesn't look good when it's supposed to be inside the lines. If that makes any sense at all. There is no right or wrong way of doing art, but there is a quality way of doing it. And that is your overall composition, your look of your composition. It looks like I actually grabbed my red orange here. So I might have to be a little bit more careful about choosing my colors. The good news is on my screen it looks red and that's what matters. All right so I'm finishing up my first balloon with the primary colors. If you have not finished it go ahead and pause the video. And you can continue on your own and when you've caught up press play. So we've done our primary colors, so now we're moving on to our second 
primary colors. Second means two. So it takes two of these to make one of those. Two of those to make one. Here it takes the red and the yellow to make the orange, the yellow and the blue to make the green, and the red and the blue to make the purple. Again, red and yellow make the orange, yellow and blue make the green, and red and blue make the purple. Red, yellow, orange, yellow, blue, green, blue, red, purple. Those are our secondary colors, and there's only three of them. And just like there's only three primary colors. So using those three colors, and now I can switch to my markers because my little spacing area is much smaller. I'm going to go ahead and grab my orange, green, and purple. And I'm going to pick my next balloon. And just using the orange, the green, and the purple, I'm going to go ahead and just color it. And again, you can color it any way you want. I just wished I picked a lighter green. This is such a dark green, and the purple is going to be so dark. I am going to switch to a lighter purple so you can tell the difference. Again, my video is definitely making it look almost black so that I don't confuse you. We'll just let this dark green be the dark color. Okay. Wow, that looks really, really dark. So, let's see. Tell me I have a light purple around here somewhere. Okay. Have a lighter purple. Hopefully it is not too dark. And of course it is. Does that look? See what I mean? Just as dark as my green. So I can fix that. <laughs> By taking a crayon. Let me grab my purple. Yep. Aha, there you go. Now you can see the purple better. little section nicely and of course the last of the primary colors is the orange heads up when you're using a marker you want to use it like you're drawing lines that is how they're designed Scribble Scrabble will dry your markers out more quickly. So it's like doing line, 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 or line up, line down, line up, line down. Okay. To fill it, to fill in your areas. So if you ever wonder why when you're coloring super fast, the markers look dried up. It's because they're not designed to go fast. They're designed to go slow and to draw lines. They're great for outlining. They're great for these small little areas. They're not so good for big areas with the fast scribble scrabble. Okay, so I'm done with my second balloon. Now your third balloon, I'm going to leave it up to you. I want you to look at this color wheel. I want you to find three colors next to each other. These are called analogous. And just for fun, just find three next to each other, like red, orange, and yellow are next to each other. Those are analogous. Those are also your fire colors. Purple, blue, and green are next to each other. They're analogous because they're next to each other. 
they are your cool colors but you can mix up your fire colors and your cool colors by going blue purple and red because these three are next to each other they're going to look great together because you make purple by using these colors so that's why those three look good together all right you can even do purple red and orange because red is in both of these they go together okay or orange and yellow and green because yellow is in both of these they go together or the yellow the green and the blue because these two make that one they go together so for your last little balloon think about three colors that are next to each other and I want you to do your last balloon with the three little colors and then finish off coloring your white paper or whatever color paper you happen to be using so that you have very little of that paper showing I often tell my students, nope, that's too much white paper showing. You need to color it in. Again, it was a big area, so I switched to my crayons to fill it all in. So I have my primary colors, my secondary colors, and then the three colors next to each other called analogous. I hope you enjoyed doing this lesson and just reviewing all those things we've learned so far. Line, space and color. Have a great day and I look forward to our next lesson together. Bye!